Hi everyone, welcome to the episode and this week's episode is about uh, my 10 month review of my 400mm Canon f5.6 fixed prime L lens and uh, I got this lens uh, around last spring so it's roughly uh, a 10 to 12 month uh, review and I've had a chance to uh, use it quite a lot so I thought it's time to give my opinion on how it performed for me and how I performed with it. So we'll get started. First of all uh, when I bought this lens uh, I did it because I wanted a sharp lens and I didn't want to compromise uh, on, on the image quality and with the third party lenses like the Sigma and the Tamron uh, 150 to 600 millimeter or 50 to 600 millimeter there was a chance with my uh, Canon 70D or if I used a full frame Canon that the lens would front or back focus and that can be a bit of a hassle to uh, adjust to and fix and sometimes uh, even that doesn't work and you still get some inconsistency with focusing so I didn't want that uh, I couldn't afford the Canon uh, 100 to 400 Mark II which was about twice the price of this I bought this second hand for 900 euros which was top dollar for a second hand lens um, but I wanted the insurance of buying from a camera dealer so I could get that guarantee and after a test period I could send it back if it didn't work. So to buy through a camera dealer um, you do pay a little bit extra when buying second hand. So how has the lens performed? Well, I've been testing it or using it with my Canon crop sensor body, the Canon 70D, which I'm filming on right now. And I've also used it with the uh, new mirrorless systems with their Canon R5 with the 45 megapixel sensor and the in-body image stabilization, uh, just to see how that worked. And uh, I've, I've I'm still up in the air whether I made the right choice. I think uh, considering my budget and my camera body, I may have made the right choice, but I'm still undecided. There's some things I just don't like about this, cam uh, this uh, lens. And it's to do probably because I'm using it on a crop body. Uh, first of all, I wanted a lens that was sharp um, wide open at f5.6 and I think it's more to do with my crop body uh, sensor but it's just not that sharp at f5.6 and uh, it was quite crushing to be told by uh, people who had viewed my videos to stop down to get maximum sharpness out of the lens and I think if I wanted to stop down uh, to get sharpness, I would have gone for maybe a, a Tamron or a Sigma. I expected this L lens to be sharp uh, straight from the get-go at f5.6 and it's, it's not. Uh, having said that, trying it on a, a full frame uh, sensor, I'm sure it is a lot sharper at f5.6 than it is on my crop sensor. But still, to get maximum sharpness out of the lens at f7.1 is pretty disappointing. So, um, in the Netherlands, there's a challenge with the light, and this having no image stabilization is a huge factor as well. Um, I've found that when hand holding with this lens at uh, eight hundredth of a second, um, it's not guaranteed that the image will be sharp and being a crop censored body the ISO is going to be pretty high if the ambient light is uh, not very strong uh, with the shutter speed of f uh, of 800th of a second 
you are bumping up your ISO pretty much. And even at eight hundredths of a second, handheld, my shots were not guaranteed to be sharp. So, uh, for consistency, I mostly have shot at a thousandth of a second. And to do that, you really are challenging the ISO capabilities of your crop sensor. Um, so, I uh, have been uh, testing it over the last two months at a thousandth of a second just to see how it performs. And to do that, I needed really sunny days. So, um, I've done some test shots here and it, we had some sunny days uh, over the last couple of months uh, with the early spring and uh, the first shots that I took uh, were just in my uh, local neighborhood and I just went for a walk along the canals because living in the Netherlands there's lots of canals uh, in many areas and my area isn't any different. So I just went for a walk and just wanted to see how the camera would perform at a thousandth of a second in bright conditions. And the first shot is of a starling. And I was sitting down on a fence when I was taking this shot. And the starling was just feeding in some grass and uh, it managed to pick up a grub and I was really happy to have captured this image and uh, if I the shot was taken at um, ISO 500 400 millimeters at f7.1 at 1 1250th of a second so I bumped up the shutter speed even more and this was pretty much handheld I was just leaning against a fence and zooming into 100%, I can still see that the grub is kind of sharp, but the bird isn't sharp. And this is probably due to the motion of the bird's head as well. But I can see that the body of the bird is also not that sharp. It's at ISO 500, so that also affects the image quality. Um, if it was shot at 100 or 160th ISO, then it probably would have been sharper. But, uh, yeah, so I thought I'd really captured the bird, but when I go in close, and I think this is an, oh, this is an unedited uh, version, and I think if I go to this one, this is an edited version and I managed to bring a little bit of the sharpness back but it's not totally sharp and as I was in this area uh, I just uh, walked along the canal a bit further and I came across some other birds such as these Nile geese and I laid down on the grass for this shot and my settings were at f7.1 still 1250th of a second at ISO 320 and I was lying prone on the ground when I took this and if I go in 100% on the eye of that Nile goose uh, I can see that the image is sharp so if I'm on a stable position uh, not really hand holding but my uh, elbows are on the ground my whole body is flat against the ground and I'm pretty much totally still, um, I can get good results. Um, this Nile goose was only about five meters away as well, so it was very close. So moving on to the next photo now, I've got another Nile goose standing next to a swan. And if I zoom in here, the Nile goose is looking very coquettishly at me and that is kind of relatively sharp that one was a little bit further away and the light wasn't as bright and we'll go to another one here and this is of a robin taken in a forest uh, at ISO 1250 
at f7.1 and a thousandth of a second. So the ISO is higher. You can see there's more uh, noise in the photo. But considering that the robins are very twitchy little birds, I'm pretty happy with this. The focus obviously missed the head, or the head was moving around uh, while the body was still. And I can see there's some fine detail in the feathers here, so I'm pretty happy with that at a thousand, no, 1250 ISO on a crop body, so that's pretty impressive. Okay, so I walked along the canal a little bit further, and I came across this uh, crested grebe, and it was really uh, strange to see the crested grebe uh, sitting in the reeds like this. I've never seen a, a grebe do that, so it really attracted my attention. Um, I had the idea that the bird was either sick or injured, and a lot of the the local predators in the area also had the same idea. So there were a lot of crows hanging around this bird and also a lot of black-backed gulls. And this one uh, was just waiting uh, near the grebe. I think uh, if the grebe had kind of laid down and not moved, the crows and this gull would have come in and started pecking at it until they killed it or just probably started eating it. Um, it's breeding season now here, so they've got young uh, chicks to feed or they're uh, building up their reserves to lay eggs, so they need protein. And this grebe, which wasn't moving in the reeds, was really attracting uh, these predators and scavengers' attention. So this gull, uh, I snapped at 1 hundredth of a second at f7.1. And because it was such a bright day, I was only ISO 800. And he was just blowing some bubbles and displaying. Uh, I'm not really sure. I think he was a bit frustrated because I was close by and he, he couldn't come in closer to the grebe or feel safe to do that. So I'm relatively happy with the sharpness of this shot. It's captured the, the water really well as it froths up. Um, the feathers here are overexposed. I couldn't bring the highlights back any further on that, but I'm relatively happy with the sharpness. Anyway, this uh, crested grebe caught uh, sight of me and started paying attention to me. And just as it was looking at me, um, a couple of uh, Canada geese were fighting with some Nile geese over their territory and the Canada goose just trampled straight over the top of this grebe and it didn't do anything so I thought this this definitely something wrong with it so I rang the uh, Dutch an animal ambulance and told them about it and they said oh, yeah it's really strange that a grebe is sitting on the ground like that um, we'll come and uh, pick it up so managed to capture this shot and I'm pretty happy with this. The feather detail is really good. It was captured at uh, a thousandth of a second with ISO 320 at f7.1. But I was more concerned about the welfare of this uh, bird than my photography at this stage. Uh, so I just hung around for a while and when the an animal ambulance showed up, uh, I asked them if I could film it uh, and they said that's no problems and uh, so I got some really nice footage of the animal ambulance uh, capturing this grebe and then they uh, checked the grebe's leg to see if there was a ring on it and there was and uh, yeah it was a really good sight to see them, them rescuing this uh, sick animal
Ja, 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 ja. <lacht> ja, ja. Ja. Zo. Nou, dat is hem. Zo, ja, mooi. Zo, wat een vogel, hè? So anyway, a couple of weeks later I rang up the uh, bird shelter that uh, the grebe was taken to and they told me uh, that the grebe was still with them and they'd been feeding it and building it up uh, because when it was brought in they said it was on the verge of death uh, and if I hadn't have intervened those birds would have killed it and eaten it. Uh, so it was this uh, bird's lucky day. Uh, they said it could have been a parasite that had uh, weakened uh, the grebe, but it was on the verge of starvation and its feathers had totally lost their waterproofing so it couldn't uh, feed itself by diving. They're a fishing bird, they're like cormorants, they go under the water. Um, so it wasn't able to feed itself for some reason because it's feathers weren't waterproof. Um, so the shelter said that uh, the grebe was being fed and building up its waterproofing again and hopefully will be uh, let free uh, in uh, a few more weeks. So that's a great uh, good news story there. So after the animal ambulance guys left with the grebe I kept walking along the canals and I, I came across this uh, great grey heron uh, and it was in the sunshine which was good and I managed to get the shutter speed up to 1250th of a second at ISO 800 and the uh, aperture was f7.1 and I just observed this uh, heron for about 20 minutes until finally it did something and what it did was it captured this uh, common green frog uh, and I'm pretty happy with the sharpness of this image considering that uh, the bird was in fast motion it's not totally sharp but I'm happy with the sharpness of the frog and yeah I think uh, the lens performed well on this occasion. So uh, after that uh, we went for a family holiday to the east of the Netherlands and uh, where we were staying there were a lot of forests. So uh, we went for a walk in the forest uh, one morning and I came across this field where there was a pair of female, fa uh, female roe deer uh, feeding in the grass and they weren't too spooked by us so I I went in a bit closer behind a tree and got to about 25 to 30 meters of this roe deer and these roe deer were uh, just molting their winter coat so they looked really usually they're quite a well-groomed animal uh, but these ones looked really scraggly their necks were losing fur and they were changing from uh, the dull uh, light brown of the winter thick winter coat to the more um, reddish color of the summer coat and you can see that if I zoom in close that you can see the tufts of old winter coat here and underneath the more vibrant uh, orangey red coat so I got within 25 to 30 meters of these feeding roe deer and I must have taken about 30 or 40 photos uh, and I thought I'd captured some really sharp shots uh, I'd taken the photos at a thousandth of a second at f7.1 at an ISO of 400 so everything should have been right but to my disappointment uh, most of these shots were soft so if I look in here at this edited version or go to the unedited version first and zoom in 
and yeah, the roe deer is just generally soft. It was in motion, or I think walking at this stage, but this is one of the sharpest ones of the 30 or 40 photos that I took, and it's just soft, basically. So that was disappointing. And this one is probably my sharpest shot. It's an edited photo. I've increased the uh, vibrancy and the sharpening and dehazed it a little bit and adjusted the white balance slightly. But if I zoom in to 100%, it's still not sharp. So that was quite a crushing blow. I was shooting from a stable platform. I was, was kneeling. I was at a thousandth of a second shutter speed. F7.1, so the sharpest aperture that I could have got. Uh, and the only thing against me, I guess, was uh, the fact that the animals were a bit further away. So the further the distance, the softer the shots are going to be. But even so, I thought uh, they weren't so far away that I couldn't get some decent sharp shots. So I was disappointed with the performance of the lens on this occasion. I noticed the fur here is a bit sharper than the head, so it could have been to do with the movement of the head. But even so, uh, only getting one maybe keeper out of 30 or 40 shots is really disappointing because these opportunities of for getting wildlife shots are few and far between. So if you're lucky enough to get the opportunity but still you miss out on getting the shot just because of your technique or because of the lack of image stabilization. Um, yeah, that could be a, a no deal for getting a lens like this. Anyway, after the disappointment of that, I um, came back to the hotel and uh, then I noticed the sun was uh, setting and illuminating a patch of leaves uh, not too far away from our room. And I was noticing some of these leaves were moving. So I went out there and I just had a closer look. And to my delight, uh, there was a, a vole, I think it's a field vole, uh, under the leaves rummaging around. And the light was in the perfect position to illuminate this uh, vole. And I could get to within uh, four meters of this uh, rodent and manage to capture some quite good shots because of the light and secondly because they were so close and I was stable enough hand holding uh, to get the shot. So here's a little vole taken in this uncropped, unedited photo. At, uh, it was still quite dark because it was in the forest. Uh, the ISO was 1250 and the uh, aperture was f7.1 and the shutter speed was one thousandth of a second. But despite the relatively high ISO for this crop body sensor, um, the image quality is not too bad. Uh, this one was uh, taken at a, a longer distance, so it's still a little soft. But if I go to the next one, uh, this one was taken closer at a lower ISO of 1,000th, of 1,000th. And if I, this is an uncropped and unedited photo straight out of the camera. And if I click on that, uh, there's some excellent sharpness there. I think the sharpness is maybe more on the nose than the eyes, but I'm happy with that. Uh, to get such a elusive little creature uh, like that was, uh, well, it redeemed the disap It made me feel a lot better after missing out on those roe deer photos. So I'm happy to have got this shot. But the, the target or the animal was very close. So after uh, leaving the east of the country, we came back to uh, home 
and I was able to get some more birds around my neighborhood. The first one was this uh, kestrel, which was flying over me in the dunes. And this is an unedited and uncopped photo. It was taken at a thousandth of a second at ISO 160. And I'm pretty happy with that. The, it isn't totally sharp on the eye. I think because the shutter speed is about a thousandth of a second too slow. Uh, but uh, that's a nice shot. I, I think I could clean that up with a bit of sharpness and uh, contrast and reducing the shadows to get a decent uh, image out of that. And we came across also this uh, sparrow in the dunes. And if I, this is an edited photo, and this sparrow has got hold of an insect. It looks like some kind of lacewing or maybe a dragonfly or damselfly, maybe. I'm not sure. And this was taken at 1250th of a second at f7.1 at an ISO of 500. So I think that's probably a bit softer on the eye because of the higher ISO, but it's got pretty good feather detail, so I'm not too disappointed with that. Although, once again, it could have been sharper. <laughs> and also we've got some jackdaws that were taking a bath. These guys are fantastic to look at. They look like they're having a really good time. And if I zoom in on that, this is cropped and edited. Uh, not totally sharp. And that's cropped and edited from this photo. So that's the uncropped version. This is the cropped version. Okay, moving from birds to World War II aircraft now. And this old World War II bomber from the Dutch Air Force and a Spitfire. Uh, they flew over during the, the um, day, the uh, Liberation Day in the Netherlands. And this was taken at 1250th of a second at f7.1 with an ISO of 160. And if I go in, yeah, it's relatively sharp. What I haven't told you is that I took 15 photos of these aircraft and this one is the sharpest of the bunch. And when you're photographing aircraft, especially aircraft or helicopters with propellers, um, you actually don't want too high a shutter speed. So probably the ideal shutter speed for capturing the movement of these propellers going around is about 125th of a second. However, because this lens has no image stabilization, if I'd taken that photo at 125, 125th of a second, um, it, I would have captured probably some uh, motion in the propeller blades, or it would have been going round and round, and you would have seen that. But the images would have been totally blurry because I was hand holding. Um, and just the lack of image stabilization would have made the images soft. So I don't recommend the 405.6 for photographing aircraft, especially with propellers, because you're just not going to be able to get the right shots. So this is the uncropped, uh, unedited version, and I managed to crop it down to this and edited a bit, adding some vibrancy and some sharpness and dehazing it a little bit. And there is some excellent detail on the tail here, which probably shows that I've... Oh, the fuselage here looks pretty sharp as well. So it edited okay. Um, I got away with this one, but these propellers look like they're just motionless, so... If I wanted to submit this to a magazine, uh, the editor probably would have been unhappy to see that the 
propellers weren't uh, doing what they should have been doing. So moving on, I went to a wildlife area uh, not far away from where I live and I was walking around a lake and I was lucky enough to see a buzzard take off from a group of trees nearby and I was just getting hammered by these crows diving at it. So I thought this is fantastic. I'm going to get some beautiful photos here. <clears throat> so uh, the bird was close. It was about 30 to 40 meters away. That's pretty close for a bird of prey or a buzzard. And once again, I was at I bumped up my shutter speed for birds in flight to 16 hundredth of a second. Uh, it was a bright day, so the ISO was just 250 and f7.1 the sharpest aperture. And I had the autofocus on uh, AI server, so it would capture the movement of the bird more easily rather than single spot focus. Um, so that was in my favor as well. So I had technically I was set up with this camera to capture some great shots. And uh, so I got this one of the buzzard being illuminated by the sun coming in from the right from this area and a, a crow uh, harassing it. Um, this is an unedited, uncropped photo. So if I go in here the focus was on the buzzard and it's not tack sharp there's a bit of noise as well because of the blue sky so with that one it wasn't too successful and I went on to this one which is edited and cropped and there's still a bit of noise here which I could have taken away some more noise and that was ISO 320 at 16 hundredth of a second, f7.1. But I do have a relatively sharp head for the, the buzzard here. So I'm pretty happy with that shot. I mean, it's not ideal, it's not perfectly sharp. And I could do more with the noise. There is some software to get rid of that noise more effectively which I don't have, so that's also an option. And here's another shot, unedited. And this is a total miss on this one. Uh, that could have been my error, but it also could have just been, yeah, probably my error. And here we have one where I did get the focus a bit nearer. Uh, but it's still not tack sharp, and I think that's just due to motion, distance, atmosphere, and uh, probably me wobbling. But at a sixteen hundredth of a second, maybe it could have been sharper at thirty-two hundredth of a second. But yeah, at those moments, you just suddenly see something. You can't adjust the ISO. You just have to try and take the best photo you can at that moment. So, I checked the back of the camera and I saw that a lot of those photos were soft, so I was crushed once again. Uh, but just as I was looking at the back of the camera, a kestrel decided to come straight over the top of me and hover directly above me by a distance of about five meters. So, it must have been feeling sorry for me and decided to give me a chance. So, oh, actually, there's this last one of the buzzard, and that is pretty sharp. That's probably the best one of the, the lot. So I got one decently sharp one out of uh, a dozen or so photos. So that's not edited either and not cropped. So at 100%, it looks pretty good. Beautiful bird being illuminated by the sun there. I got lucky on that one. Anyway, this kestrel just came straight over me and just hovered. And point blank range, point blank range, no, that's the wrong terminology. Very uh, close. 
and this is an edited version where I bumped up the saturation and the sharpness and I was at 16 hundredth of a second with ISO 250 at 400 millimeters f7.1 and I managed to capture this kestrel and that that saved the afternoon for me and uh, the eye is sharp the face is relatively sharp and there's not too much motion blur with the wings so that was a good result there I also took another one and this one was a total miss that was going across from left to right just gliding so it wasn't even really flapping uh, but just that sideways movement it uh, was too much for the shooter me and also fooled the camera so would I suggest uh, this lens I think if you have a crop sensor um, and your camera doesn't have image stabilization and you live in a part of the world that uh, has a lot of dark days then no I would not recommend this lens uh, if you shoot prone or from a tripod for most of the time uh, then possibly but to capture motion of animals uh, you're gonna have to bump up your shutter speeds and the ISO so you would really need a, a, um, a full frame camera uh, probably with an advanced sensor to make the most of uh, that because uh, you're gonna be dealing with high ISOs however I have tried this with the IBIS of the new uh, Canon R5 and the, which is similar to the R6 and I I think if I had an R6 I would give this a go I've got shots down to 1 60th of a second uh, for birds that are also just walking along and the IBIS handled that really well so I think for the new mirrorless uh, systems with IBIS you could use this and I have used this with some good results um, so it's a really specialist lens I think it's uh, not for the faint-hearted you're going to get some disappointing results uh, it places a lot of emphasis on technique and the skills of the photographer um, so with that yeah it's I would not uh, automatically assume because it's an L lens you're going to get sharp shots uh, there's so many different factors at play distance to the animal that you're photographing the light conditions if you've got hard uh, sunny conditions you're poor, more likely to get sharp shots rather than dull low light conditions especially if the animal is farther away so uh, yeah, after 10 or so months of using this, I'm still not sure where I stand with this. Uh, if I can afford to buy a mirrorless body, then I would keep this. However, with my 70D, uh, I'm not sure. I think I'm going to rent some other lenses and just see how they perform with my 70D or I may even uh, upgrade my body to um, either a full frame or a mirrorless full frame system um, I know with the RP with its full frame sensor and good uh, low light capabilities that uh, this uh, lens would perform probably wide open a bit better as well but that's yet to be seen I have to try that out anyway guys uh, that's my update on the Canon 400mm fixed prime f5.6 L lens. I hope you enjoyed it. hope I didn't ramble on too much. And uh, I'll see you next time for another video. Take it easy and look after yourselves. Bye.